Hey guys, it's the night you've all been waiting for. I'm starting to lose my voice, which means Zeb is going to do all the talking. I all won't right. be interrupting much. <laughs> That's not a real thing. I don't know life without that. <laughs> oh, you missed. You missed. Oh. Well, you I'm wearing lipstick, so now you've got pink all over your beard. It's okay. I won't wipe it off. <laughs> this doesn't work. I love you. I'm bringing right. up comments. <laughs> Anyways. Tonight is a fun mix. We actually have quite a few things that we got for free. One that somebody gave us because she was like, I'm just going to get rid of it so you can wrap up the mirror in it and it wound up being something pretty cool. And then we went thrifting and I think at the thrift store we spent $35? Um, yeah, it was uh, yeah, you know, 35 36 right something in there. Something like that. Not a ton of money at the thrift store. And then I spent 75 on a dresser that we'll show you here in a little bit. So I'll let Zeb get started showing you our finds. All right, so thrift store stuff. This is just a uh, cake pan. I'm gonna bring it up well, close. Well, it's a pie pan. Well, pie pan, not but cake. I like the ruffled edges, and it's actually would you would buy it at Williams Sonoma, so it's not vintage, but it's from France, and it retails. I googled it about twenty four ninety five. It does have a chip. It's got a little tiny chip right here. I'll sand that so it's smooth, so no one will get cut. But it's so pretty, and so I paid how much for it? It was $3. Yeah, and in my shop, it'll sell for like $9.95. Can you see the chip hiding up here? And it would be so cute with lemons in it, you know, on a coffee table, or you could actually use it for pies if you're a baker. Yeah, it's like a stone. It's like stoneware. Yeah, the brand is uh, Emily Henry, and it is from France. So I that's kind of caught my eye. I didn't know when I found it. I love this ruffled edge, and then I saw it was from France, and I was like, three bucks, worth a chance. We're running low on books. So we picked up some books. One of these was more than we anticipated. We didn't realize was it. Was it the big one? Uh, I don't know, but it was like $3. I think it was the Miracle of Forgiveness, but I actually want to read that book. So So this one here, this is a religious book. It's called Doctrine and Covenants Commentary. But we love the color on it. And the pages are old, kind of faded, getting a little bit of yellow on them. So it's perfect. The binding's broken. We like it even more because of that. It was like a dollar fifty for everything but the big one, and we sell them for five dollars. So religious reasons aside, on that we won't we won't sell it for that. We sell them for looks. So probably about five six bucks on that book because yeah, it's nice and, and thick. We sell for five dollars each. But yeah, and I got some green ones for St. Patty's Day. And also then green display. we found some Reader's Digest books. If you can find these, these are always fun to just grab because they really made some fun covers on them. And a lot of them are getting fairly old. Like you can see the gold on there. It's getting a little worn. You can always tell you to smell them, see how old they are. So, <laughs> so these were $1.50 each. We'll also sell these for probably five bucks right yeah, there. Yeah, we just have one price in the shop. All books are five bucks, and if you buy five, you get them for four. So the one that we bought for three dollars, we won't make any profit on. So when we're looking for books, we always are looking for fun colors that are going to catch the eye, and they need to look a little bit aged. We don't want like a brand new looking book like that's, yellow or brown pages. Yeah, that's like straight out of the uh, out of the sleeve, and this is got the gold on here which is also cool yeah it's actually one of my favorite books so i'm actually probably gonna read that and then i'll take it to the shop so i won't make any money on that one book but the rest are we're all a dollar fifty which is a great price for hardbound books and they are really great for staging if you don't sell at a store but you just want to decorate your coffee table or whatever i love like if you take these books like this and you wrap them with some twine around them and then maybe put like a thing of flowers on it it's really cute on a shelf coffee table whatever and amazing for staging so Check out this free blanket. Yeah, so this quilt, we'll show you the dresser that we bought, but we went to pick up a dresser and a mirror for $75, and the lady said, I have this old tattered quilt. And that it is I, tattered. And it's tattered that I'm gonna take to the DI. But I got it home, and it's actually hand sewn. It does have a hole, but. It's got lots of holes. These can... hand sewn quilts are worth a ton of money. You can tell it's hand sewn because the stitching is irregular. And this quilt, even in this condition, is worth at least $35 to $40. So something like this, my mom will take an old quilt like this and she'll make new pieces and stitch them back in. I don't do that. I like the way that looks. Like that, I love a stack of tattered old quilts. Well, my, mom, my mom is capable of fixing that. So if you've got the skills, you could fix this and sell it for probably quite a bit more, but. Um, I don't know. 
I, I think it's worth more like that to me personally. That's what, queen size? Uh, I don't know, it's pretty big. This is, yeah. my wingspan is about six feet and I'm at the edge here. Yeah. I love tattered quilts. Like I have a couple displayed in my bedroom. They're really, really hard to find. So I actually will probably ask like 40 for it at least because it's queen size, even with a hole. And I'll wash it with OxyClean so it's as stain free as possible. But I was like, score! Paid $75 for a dresser and mirror, which I thought was a good deal because I've been having a hard time finding antiques and came with a great hand sewn quilt. And I love like the artistry and the time that goes into them. So they're definitely something that are worth picking, especially if you're into farmhouse. Don't, don't, don't show the made in China sticker on that one. <laughs> made in China. Hey, China makes some good stuff. <laughs> this quality has lasted a long time. It's just little like imitation Crocs. I bought all three of these Crocs for $4.50, but with some spring flowers in them, they're perfect for farmhouse decor. So yeah, they'll, uh, they won't last long. I'll probably sell them as a set and sell them for like $19.95 for the set. And I paid $4.50. Look, they're like nesting yeah, Crocs. They're nesting Crocs. And somebody's going to get a great deal because $19.95 for three Crocs is, is a great deal. So if I can get them done without breaking them. Yeah. So you're going to see if we got, I'm going to look at comments if you want to talk to them okay. about your final I'll, I'll talk glass until line. I have no voice. So, um, I don't know if we told you guys this before. Zeb and I both have callings with the youth in our church. And my calling is I'm in the presidency with some other women. And we're over um, eight congregations of youth, essentially. It's called the stake. And uh, we're going to be doing a retreat for the 15 to 18-year-old boys and girls. So, we were checking out this. Uh, lodge that we're going to house like 150 youth and, and leaders in a couple weeks. Oh, I need to drink water. Anyways, and it's funny, people ask me like, where do you get your stuff? And it, I just happened to notice that she was showing us the kitchen tucked way in the back were these boxes. And I said, oh, that looks like some beautiful vintage glassware. And she's like, yeah, let's just, she started pulling it out and getting all excited about it. And she's like, I've been meaning to get rid of this forever. I just never got to it. I said, well, would you like for us to take it? She goes, Oh, would you please? <laughs> so, ooh, that's better. So I was like, sure. So we wound up getting, I don't know if you can see, here's the boxes. I actually have four complete sets. And then I also have some odds and ends. So I'll bring them close so you can see them. My favorite is the carnival glass. It's iridescent. This carnival glass set, I think it's beautiful. So I have a set of four of those. And then I got some odds and ends cups. That one's got leaves on it. It's kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know if that one will make it to the shop. But it's these a great are my thing. favorite. I have probably a dozen of these little hobnob glasses. Aren't they so cute? And then I got this. Um, this is made by Anchor Hawking. And this is Early American Prescott. Is what it's called. And I've got a set of this. And it's got really pretty cut glass. I'm going to show that one. Yep, I'll show them. Someone, some people have had some really good ideas about the quilt. I'll address in a second. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've seen people frame them or use them for upholstery. Well, they're saying use them for like old, like uh, pillows. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, that, that's I'm, why it's worth forty bucks because you could get a couple, three, four good pillows if you backed it with something else. Also, use them under like a Christmas tree. This one I like because of the leaf design. Kind of reminds me of like uh, ivy or laurel wreaths. So, how much are you gonna sell these for? I don't know. I don't do glassware. Molly does so. I'll sell them for a reasonable price. And what I'm thinking is I'll keep track of when they sell and when they've all sold, I'll take my profit and I'll just donate it back to the church since it came from a church property. And this is a little bit more modern. It's kind of cut glass on the back. So yeah, and it's fun. And these were gonna just be tossed or dropped off at the thrift store. But the problem is when you drop glassware off at the thrift store, a lot of times it doesn't make it in one piece <laughs> by the time it gets on the shelf. So this will be fun. All right. I think I that these over. ones with the little hobnobs, I'm gonna display them in the store with like a little flower in them so they can kind of get an idea of how they could display them at home. So I thought that was really fun. And I'll be excited to sell them all and then be able to give the money back to church. All right. All right, now I gotta get a drink. I actually am trying to think, did you pick any of this stuff? 
Yeah. What'd you pick? The books. Oh. Yeah, the books and that. <laughs> Did you find this or I found this? No, I found this. It was in the yard. Okay. And I said, hey, what about this? And you said, yeah, that's good. And I put it in the cart. All right. All right, well, you can tell about <laughs> it. So this, we're going to probably paint the whole thing. I'm probably going to brush the outside so it's got like a nice fun texture and then we'll spray the inside because who wants to paint all those little shells Or, in there? see the back has holes so we could just put beadboard in the back. Yeah. So we might not even paint the inside at all, just paint the outside, put beadboard inside and have like a two-tone. Someone hung it not yeah. properly. And it's solid wood little curio, needs some new knobs. It's going to get some IOD knobs, I'm sure. It needs, yeah, this, this is all broken and busted. But it was $4. Yeah, and, and that redone i feel like if it's done properly it's gonna probably fetch about thirty dollars yeah you could you could have your little glasses on here they're small yeah. enough it would be so cute in a bathroom i think like behind a toilet or oh, that'd as be, a vanity that'd or be something like a nice little uh yeah um, i think it's cute medicine cabinet yeah all right big baskets we love big baskets this one was six dollars a little more than we usually pay but for baskets this big it's about right i'm gonna paint it and we'll just use our paint sprayer and i'll sell it for 24 dollars easily like it's a really great size for a farm table which where we live farm tables are popular people in utah have big families everybody has a table at least for six but a lot of people have tables for eight and twelve and they're looking for something substantial this would also be great on top of an armoire. Mm -hmm. Like if you have, a, you don't want to decorate a lot of little tchotchkes on top of, a, of an armoire, but you could take this and put seasonal floral in it and it would just be one big impact piece. And I like that. So people are always looking for big baskets. Yeah. Well, when I was building farm tables, um, probably the most popular size was the eight foot, mm -hmm. but we built a lot of 10 foot tables and rarely a five or a six foot table, very rarely. Yeah. And never a table for less than six people. Yeah. Because people have big families, if they don't have lots of kids, they got grandkids. All right, right. This one Zeb wasn't sure about, but I think it's so Jamie cool. has a vision. We're going to show you what we're going to do with it in this video. It was made in China. <laughs> it's got tin in the back, like a ceiling tin. It's framed out like a window. It's got a planter, cute little spindles, rusty roof. And look at this detail. All this has to go. And then we're going to paint it. And then I'll probably put some spring floral in it. $8, right? And this, with spring floral, will be between $40, maybe upwards of $50, because the floral is a little bit expensive, but people will pay that for a good decorative piece. Oh, Linnea says to uh, find some uh, vintage, where was it? I lost it. Uh, vintage perfume bottles for the cabinet and put it in a bathroom. Oh my gosh, that would be so cute. You guys have way better idea. That's why, you know what, secretly, that's why we do this. Catherine because Miles we, says we could put a whole baby in that basket. You could put a whole, you, you could. <laughs> it could, it's big Not enough. Not any of our babies. It's big enough, you could My probably use it for a My babies come out at nine pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Zeb makes large children. Uh, we'll talk about that another day. But a lot of the reason we love to go live is because you guys have really great ideas for our stuff and sometimes we can't think of it, but you do, so that's always good. Let me show you these roosters. They gotta go. They're kind of cool. just dust magnets. They're made out of like yeah. reeds and stuff. And I don't know how we paint it. And I don't like to just put stuff that we don't have for. And they're flat, so they, they're made to be... Oh, look. It's like cardboard on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody liked it. I, Zeb didn't want it, but I couldn't pass it up. All the components would cost you more than $8 to build it. And I think it would be way too painted. All right, you want to show them the dresser? Yep, yeah, I'll show them the dresser, show them the mirror. So this dresser okay. was 70 75, but it came with a quilt, so now I'm feeling like I got a good deal. Yeah. I usually don't pay more than $50 for an antique dresser, but if they have a mirror, I will go up to 75 or 80 because I asked like $200 for a dresser, but if it has a mirror, then I asked 300 so I can spend a little bit more. So it's gonna need a little work. It doesn't have its drawer stops on these drawers here. The top ones I think are okay. The side is splitting over here, it's coming apart, so I'm gonna either need to, what I'll probably do is put a little glue right in here, but I'll run a dowel on this side through, because otherwise to get a good, to get a good glue up, I'd have to take this whole side apart. I'd and have to remove it. All the tiger choke isn't really, like there's no bubbling. The top is so, in good shape. Are we going to leave the top? At least the top will be left alone, but it's quite, I actually think I'd really love to sand this piece 
and do a real stain on it. I don't know. I don't think you've ever stained a, pe- a whole dresser, ever. I know, ever. I don't think I have either, but it has lots of straight lines. Ever. So. I don't think you've ever done it. I'm trying to think back. It would make a good video, and the only thing curvy on this dresser is the mirror, so it would oh. be easy to, to see. We stand. have the mirror here. I'm going to put you back on the tripod. Yeah, it does have the mirror. It just needs to be silicone back in. It doesn't have the hanging hardware, so I'm going to have to fabricate that. But it does have the pins, which is like harder. Yeah, the pins are what's important. The mirror is beveled and original and has no damage, which is perfect. Yeah, it's loud. Sorry, guys. So this is the mirror. Watch out for the mess and the delivery stuff back behind there. <laughs> but that fits up in there like that. You see these pins. I got to make hardware for the pins to go in and then... That'll be no big deal. How much are we going to sell this for? Because you paid a little more oh. than we usually pay for dressers. No, like well, this. with a mirror, I, 75 is about right. I will sell it for at least 300 If I strip it and stain it, I'm going to sell it for 400 Because that's a lot of work. But I think if I were to, like, strip it completely and stain it with real stain and get that really pretty gray tone wood, I think it would be pretty. If you're planning on staining this, then I probably won't drill holes in the side. I'll just have to figure out how to glue to that To glue out. it and strap it. If I don't wind up staining the whole thing at the very least, the top will stay natural with a stain because the tiger's oak is really pretty. And I could also stain the drawers because those would be easy to sand. So we'll see. I get right. a lot of questions about it, so. See how ambitious I am. I'm gonna go get a towel and some paints. What color do you want to paint this? Look for some questions to answer, and I will get some paint and a towel for us. Okay, let's see. Stain it. I agree. Everybody likes staining the idea. The dresser. All hard eyes for the dresser. Uh, I dare you to sand that whole dresser. Katie Scott, you're a stinker. You know how much work that's gonna be. That's why you're daring me to do it. All right, um, everybody, now everybody wants us to stain it, so I kind of feel like we have to. Maybe we'll have to try some, some stripper. We'll see. We Here. will see. What are we doing? Um, it's dry enough on that. That's going to sand right up. Yeah, I don't think it's going to take it It's there. It's really dry. It's had, it's had some water on it at some point. But oh, it's, they said that we could plant succulents in here. I yeah. think so too, but I feel like you want can you taller. Can you straighten this out? Yeah. All right. What colors? Take... What colors do you want? We'll pull this stuff out in a second. Uh, I don't know. White. Apothecary and white swan. Let's let's be dairy. Okay, you guys. There's like Walmart bags in here. That's interesting. Thank you for shopping at Pace and Market. Oh, that's handmade. Yeah, that's so. I think somebody put this in here. Like the thing might have been made in China, but this was, this was handmade. I'm kind of making a mess. There's like parts everywhere. Yeah, these leaves are real. It's organic matter here. See ya, rooster. Bye-bye, rooster. Okay. Zeb, you might have to take this out in my garage and dump it. And dump the whole thing? Oh yeah, it's got a, I'll go blow it out real quick. Here, <laughs> just put that all here. here, just give me the whole thing. I'm going to go dump it. You keep answering questions. Okay. Here. Sorry guys. We're good. I'm just going to go dump it. It's all just in there sitting like in a foam thing. You're surprised we haven't had a Jack cameo. Aren't Jack and Redrick building an epic Lego? They are on a mission. They're building a huge Lego fort. Yeah, so Jack and Redrick are building a Lego fort. We challenged them to do that. So you might not see them at all. <laughs> My oldest son had three teenage boys over her all day eating all my snacks. I'm going to have to have them shake this out. Um, my, my teenage daughter is at a dance. And my other daughter is at a girlfriend's house. And the little boys are building Legos. No, poor roosters. I'm sorry. The roosters had to go. Um, is it, oh, um, if you are a channel member... If you can check out the community post from today, we're taking votes and we'll tally up the votes tomorrow for what our channel member only video will be for Tuesday. So definitely check that out. Um, let's see, Karen Spur, Spur Duty. 
when and where on the Anthem store. So I don't have the address memorized yet, but I did post it. Um, sorry, I'm losing my voice. I posted it on my Facebook page and I also posted it on the Jim Gray Vintage group. We're going to be there on the 16th and the grand opening in Anthem is from two to six on the 16th. And there is an event page and we will, um, oh, I did good on your name. We will post a link to the grand opening in Anthem once this video isn't live anymore. I don't know where Caitlin is. I don't think she's, <coughs> I don't think she's on tonight. If Caitlin tops on, I'll see if she can pop a link to the event page. If not, you can find it on our Facebook page. Yeah, I posted it today on Facebook. You find the cactus with the snow on it. Uh, it's in that post. Do I use Facebook Marketplace to sell furniture? Yes, I don't list things individually all the time, but I do take shots of my store and then in the listing I'll put like vintage, antique, farmhouse, furniture, decor, dressers, buffet, keywords that people would be searching for and then I'll put like one dollar for the price. Then I put the phone number, the address and then people can contact the store or go by. A lot of people that live in the area know when they see my pictures because they're pretty recognizable the way I edit them and with my sign is usually in the first Sorry picture. guys. Um, they recognize them and so they watch for them in Marketplace and then they'll stop by the shop to see this stuff. Um, and then I do list things individually like the first time I do it, but I don't relist them every week. I probably should, but. I'm gonna pass I'm get some of that. What do you want to do, white? Um, I would say paint it apothecary and then we'll do a white dry brush. All right. Paint it apothecary, white dry brush. Yeah. I just want to bring out some of the detail, especially on this. Here. I'm wondering though, yeah, this needs to be painted too. Yeah, everything's gonna go. But I might paint this top, I might paint this white and this front part white, and okay. then the rest will be apothecary. I'm going apothecary that. on the roof right now. Uh, okay, oh, Caitlin's on there. All right, Caitlin, can you drop the link for the event page for me? Oh, are you? You go in with, uh, I got a little brush for whatever reason for you here. Uh -huh. you make the magic happen with the little <laughs> you brush. You gave me the little brush? Yeah. It was the first one I saw. I just picked it up. Well, like, if oh, if I plant it, line it with plastic. Oh, it'll have fake flowers. It's going in the shop. We can't keep anything alive in the store. That would require somebody remembering to water it. <laughs> oh. All right. Since I'm not even on camera here, I'm just going to poke right, you so down so you can this, see. If you, do you guys have any ideas of what you would like? So we have a channel membership group. We do two extra videos. You get emojis and all that jazz, but we also do a printable and we have not picked out our printable. Have yeah, we, what I'm, are we doing, doing? I'm doing the chickens from Hawaii. I'm going to oh, do you're doing watercolor chickens. I'm going to do that chicken picture justice oh, and not okay. just because I told them because I wasn't going to bother fixing that other one with like good paint when brushes did you say and that? things in the next live video we did. Oh, okay. So next month we're going to get chickens, but what ideas do you have for other months? We need to know what kind of printables, what watercolors do you guys like? Have you liked what we've done so far? We know what we love, but we're making them for yeah. you guys. So we've done the barn and we've done uh, the jar of flowers, like the old Mason jar of flowers. And for those of you that are new and don't know what we're talking about, uh, YouTube has an option for a channel membership and it's a way you can help support us. But in return, we offer a free printable every month, a chapter out of the book that we're writing, and we do one extra live video and one extra edited video for channel members. Woo, losing my breath and my voice. You wanna take over? <coughs> yeah, it's been really fun so far. We've got lots of really good feedback. People are loving it. We're doing things, the, the extra videos have been more centered on like the back end of what we do, like how we run the business, how we got started, why we do it, why we love doing it, working together, things like that. Like social media is coming up on Tuesday. We're gonna go over how to grow that. Well, I say social media, that's the way the poll is leading. We'll see yeah, if we're seeing what, what tools wants. you need to get started and which are the best to buy first is a close runner up. <laughs> I would I'm hoping it's social media because I'd love to do a video on Facebook. And we do this in our channel membership group because not everybody that watches our videos has a, like a retail space or even cares. So we do things that are more specialized in there. Um, 
if you're wanting to, if you're already in the channel member group, if you go to the community page, you should find Zeb. Didn't you just recently post a link? Yeah, is this afternoon? You put no. Did oh, you? Oh yeah, them? yeah. That was a couple days ago. A few so it's days like back. Three or so four if you posts scroll down. back in community, you can find a post that put all the links for all the videos and everything. So that way, it's because sometimes they get buried in the community feed. So. We're using DIY paint for those of you that are new. I know we have a ton of new subscribers. You can pick up the paint and the paint brushes we're using at jamierayvintage.com. They're no VOC, all natural, so it's totally safe for us to be using in our kitchen. And no prep is required for most projects unless it's so shiny you can see your face in it. So in this case, we didn't even wipe. You should wash your project. We didn't. But this is pretty dry. I knew it would stick. Zeb, when you come down here, be careful. Right. Um, I did pretty good on that one. Missed the spot. Yeah, this is gonna be really cute, actually. I'm, are we I'm gonna wondering. leave the back gray, or are you wanting me to paint that apart? No, I think I'm gonna paint this white, and then like kind of dry brush over this part, so you can see all the details. I don't think they can see that. Do you want to flip me, it around bring, so they can see that? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the camera real close, and we're gonna do a, like a top-down view. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna solidly paint like the window frame that's in here. But on this part that's like the tin, it's just going to get a dry brush almost. So that way you can see all the details. They really pop. You see how you can see the details better there than here? Sometimes a little paint makes a lot of difference. All right, we're going to paint this. Zeb, so do we have any questions? I'm sure. They're, they're given... Um... This will get some pink spring flowers in it. They're given ideas on what they want to see for printables. Oh, fun. I might try my hand at doing some of them. I know if Zeb shows me how, I probably can. I've been known to do a few things already, artsy-wise. I actually um, just got done designing our spring line of stencils for the website. So hopefully those will be out in the next week or so once the graphic designer is done digitizing them, then I gotta sign off on them. And I, I'm excited because my spring stencils are spring related, but they'll work when it's not spring anymore. So they'll be kind of. Karen Spurduddy says, uh, I know it's not your style, but let's see, I lost it. Zeb loves to do things that are not my style. <laughs> uh, but a French country would be cute on this project. Oh, I love French country. Or maybe, are you talking about the dresser? But Jamie loves doing French country stuff. Like if well, she... everybody has a different idea of what it is. I feel like I do French country a lot, but maybe I don't. We It's been a minute, I think. Yeah. It's been a while. We, we actually have a French country. Uh, it came from France Armoire, remember? We have a video on that. Yeah. And I did like this blue color with the white wax, and it turned out really cute. Oh, we got a new member, Sherry Sparks. Oh, hey, I know Sherry. Oh, wait, nope. Sherry's already. I was a member, like, Sherry's been a member for a minute, I thought. I thought she's she gave us five bucks. Oh, well, thank you, Sherry. That will help because my teenager just took money to go. We needed to get rid of them, so they were off of the Wi Fi, so I had to give them some. <laughs> he had all his buddies over here. I had to give them some them food money so they would leave us alone. That's how you get rid of teenage boys you give them money for food. They eat a lot. All right, we're coming along here. Might have actually got this whole thing. Karen says this box, French country. Oh, well, what do we have to do to make it French country? <laughs> I feel like I'm, Zeb, are you painting this green? The other side is white, friend. Well, now you can get blended and I'm gonna have to go paint the other side green. No, what are you doing? All right, <laughs> paint the other side green. Blend it up. <laughs> we'll let it dry. We'll give you guys close up fly around <laughs> view of this when we're all done. It's okay. It's all going to get distressed. It's all going to get distressed. Actually, I'm loving that. You're actually, you're loving it. It was a happy mistake. <laughs> there's no mistakes. There's only happy little accidents. Isn't what Bob Ross says? Yep. All right. I don't have to paint the whole inside. Because that's going to have stuff in the bottom. Yeah, that's going to have stuff in it. So I'm just going to. I'm going to brush it a little bit in case somebody sees inside of it. Oh, I just... And lots of comments. They're just flying through. I'm having trouble finding them. You guys all are right. awesome. I'm almost done here. I'll have to go back and read through all these so I make sure I don't miss any. Zeb does. He's very good at that. He tries to read through everything. If we ever don't get back to you, it's only because we get like hundreds and hundreds of emails, PMs, texts every day. So we try really hard to get to everybody, but it's... 
it's virtually impossible sometimes. All right, let's flip this cool up. Bridge. What do I need to do if I am a channel member but using an iPad? So community posts don't show up on the iPad, but you can still watch stuff on the iPad if you have the link. Um, but you're not going to see the post. You need to either view that from a computer or a phone. So what you can do is email yourself the link and then pull the link up on your iPad. Eventually YouTube will catch up and with the times and do it, but I don't know what's going on. So Donna Oops. S says the chippy paint I see online looks like black underneath. Is it really black paint or dark stained wood? Is chippy paint only happening with milk paint? Um, that kind of chippy is hard to get with anything else. Here, can I buy your brush? Usually what you're seeing is either a dark paint underneath or, or a dark stain underneath. Like this right, piece that we showed show. tonight will will be dark because it's dark, dark anyways well the piece the shutters we just did we painted them dark brown to give them a dark brown base oh i missed another spot you did yep right here okay i think it turned out are you gonna good. paint this lip yeah i'm painting it right now i'm gonna be careful i mean that's why i like this little uh frenchy for details because you can be careful and cut in and I need to actually get a few other spots now when I'm looking at it. Yep, I missed some too. And then once we sand it down, because this wood has so much texture, it'll look a very like aged. Sometimes people try to get that same look on wood that doesn't have texture and it's just hard to achieve. But when the wood is kind of like, what's that saw marks? Is that what it Curf, is? Curf marks. Curf marks on the wood where it's not milled smooth. Mm -hmm. That's how you get the texture. Here, you need to go some more white over this. Oh, over that edge? Yep. Okay. So this is the edge I painted. He accidentally painted that edge, but we're just going to leave it. We'll probably sand this later and it'll all... It'll all look great. We'll bring everything back. Okay, there we go. So let me find some pink flowers so I can... You, you Jamie's going to go pink flower hunting. I'm sure we have a myriad of options. Oh, don't options. you worry. But it's going to be pretty fun hanging on so a wall picture. somewhere. Picture these in here. This will also go in a bathroom. Does that kind of give you the idea of here. the color scheme? I'm going to put this back on. I can't put it right next to it because I don't want to get water. Sorry, guys. I'm flying you all over tonight. I hope you don't get sick. So picture these inside of this. Look how cute all those colors are together. Perfect for spring. All right. There you go. These are from Ikea, by the way. I think they're like $3 a stem. So what I'll do is take how much I would charge for just this. And then add on the price of how many of our flowers I wind up using. And I always keep floral because you never know when you're going to need it. Look at this with just green in it. Oh, yeah. You could go neutral. This fits our IKEA plants. I'm not going to put them in there. I don't want to get paint all over Yeah, them. you could definitely go neutral on the bottom there, too. You could even do, like, one of those mini wreaths from Hobby Lobby right here. Would be really cute, too. A lot of options. I feel like for 8 bucks, And really... As far as painting goes, once it's dry, we'll just distress it and throw a coat of clear wax and it's done. So you can see we did that in a matter of minutes. So not a lot of time invested there and it turned out pretty darn cute. All right, I'm gonna fix this there. All right, All right. I think that's, that's it. Do we have questions? Do we wanna, we can, um, I can paint this basket, but I'd rather spray it. Let's brush it and see what it looks like. And if you don't love it, I'll just spray it. Take me two okay. seconds to redo I'll, it. I'll dry brush it and see. Here, let me get this. Let me move this. All right. We'll paint this basket because it's only 904. I know, We're too guys, fast. We painted it. We went through all the stuff tonight quickly. Yeah. Got to let that dry in the garage there. Okay, let's see. Make sure I'm not missing. Everybody likes the makeover. See, I Zeb told me not to buy it. Oh, ye of little faith. I was thinking you were gonna leave the chickens in there oh, when no, I first saw gross. it, and I'm like, no, no, don't do it. All right, so if I don't like this dry brushed, what I'll do is I'll just spray it with a spray gun because trying to brush this solid would be a nightmare. But what I like to do to baskets is just kind of run my brush over them and whitewash them. Cindy Grado asks, what is your biggest selling items for spring? 
anything floral, lots of glassware because people will put flowers in it. Um, anything that's organizing, people are redecorating their house. So in about another couple weeks, hopefully we'll pick up on sales of furniture. That sells quite a bit and just things light and bright. So people don't really buy dark and heavy pieces in the spring, I find, because they just want everything new and pretty, which is great for me because that, that's my style anyways. Year round, those are what I like. Simply T71 uh, asks, who do you use for creating your stencil line? Um, I have a manufacturer. It's a secret. <laughs> it's not a secret, but it's one of those things that's not like that I share with everybody. But I have a manufacturer that I work with and they're, we, we worked a little before and they liked my design work. And so we have a, an agreement and we work together. If you ever want to develop anything, all I really need to do is contact cold call manufacturers that already make stuff and ask them what's involved. A lot of times here there's like minimums and stuff. So just a little trial and error. That is where having a YouTube channel and social media presence goes a long way because I'm still small potatoes. So it's not like I can afford thousands and thousands of minimums, you know? All right, let's get this. I actually like this just dry brush is probably okay. Bridget Witten asks, how can I safely darken wood in the kitchen? My husband made me a butcher block island. A real stain. So we have a product called Real Stain on the website. And that's what we use on rolling pins and cutting boards. And it's water-based, it's a milk stain, and it's, uh, we, we haven't had any issues. It's been amazing. Yeah, and we, we seal it safe. with butcher block oil. Yeah, and it's, there's not a lot of products out there that are stains that are that way. So it is a little bit more expensive and you do have to keep it refrigerated um, after use. So that way you can still use it and not waste it, but it's amazing and a little bit goes a long way. We open up a core at a time and usually keep them about six weeks. So Jenna Phillips asked a good question. Did you used to have a limit when you first started on how much you would spend just in case it didn't sell fast? Oh yeah, I still do. Like I only spend, like I told you on dressers, I only spend about $50, $50 on antique dressers because they sell them for... 200 and if they have a mirror then I'll go up to 75 or 80 dollars for buffets um, anywhere from 100 and 100 to possibly 200 if it's really amazing is the most I spend for them and I've kind of kept that as a rule of thumb and then even now even though I've done it more I don't I think some people think I get like great gobs of money for my stuff and I really don't and part of that is because I try to keep my prices low so that way, even people that don't have a ton of money can still purchase my furniture because we didn't have a lot of money for a long time. And so I don't want to ever be to the point where I'm so outrageous that, you know, like a teacher or a policeman can't afford my, my work. I actually really love this. So a couple questions here. Um, Cheryl Atkinson, if you're just, I'm assuming you're just joining by your comment. It says, is that it a basket? If we, we had a ton of stuff earlier, so go back and watch the replay. Yeah, sorry we've from been, the beginning. We had a ton of stuff. We've been live for about 30 minutes. So yeah. you, you missed out if you're only seeing the basket. Um, there was another one that said, oh, there's a sticker on the bottom of the basket. Looks like it's gone. Jamie got it. I got it. it. The sticker's gone. And really, you don't need to dry brush the bottom, but I like to. And I never know. Sometimes I hang them on the wall, so I'm going to go ahead and dry brush the whole shebang. It's all getting dry brushed. And we'll just we'll just coat this with some wax to seal it. It's just decor. It's not like somebody's going to Yeah, and, and even it. if we didn't, in about 30 days, this DIY paint would be nice and stuck on there, and it would you wouldn't have any issues yeah, with it. It's not going to come off once it's cured. All right, let's see. I think I need a little more there. I'm liking this look. So with dry brushing, it just kind of gives it a weathered, aged look. And you could come, if you wanted to be real crazy, you could come back and dry brush in a gray color on top, give it a weathered wood effect. Glenda Pantley asks, how often do you go out and gather new items to resell? Uh -huh. We at least make one dedicated trip every week, but all through the week, we're finding things on online or 
where people are like, hey, do you want this? We get a ton of PMs every day and messages. Hey, I have this, are you interested in it? It's this price. And we say yay or nay and go pick it up. A lot of times <laughs> people don't realize I, I shop at picker prices, so I don't, I don't take it. But a lot of times people give me stuff for free and I, I am, even if it's for free, if I don't think it'll resell and it's not worth refinishing, I won't do it. But a lot of times when I get stuff for free, People don't have time to take it to the thrift store or whatever. So it's doing a favor to them to just pick it up and get it out of their house. A lot of like senior citizens and stuff, they want to clean out their house, but they don't have the energy to get rid of it. So I'll get calls from my friends. Hey, my mom's moving. Would you please go to their house and get like this, that, and the other thing? And it's great because it helps us out with our business, but also great because it's helping somebody who doesn't have the means and would actually have to pay a service to get rid of it. It helps them out. And sometimes we'll take things that we don't necessarily want in exchange for something we do want and then we'll just drop it off at the thrift store. So let's ask why you're not using a bigger paintbrush. I know the answer to this. Because it already had paint on it from my other project and I didn't want to dirty another brush. There you go. And <laughs> what, I mean, for dry brushing, you could use a 95 cent chip brush and it would work. I shouldn't tell you that, you know, I should be promoting my stuff, but for what I'm doing, really any brush will work. Janet Hume, I have a question in regards to the thumbs up and watching the ads on YouTube. Do we need to watch the ads or can we just thumbs up for you to get what you need for YouTube to count us watching? So as far as us getting any kind of kickback, if you watch the ads, the longer you watch, the more money we make. The shorter we're talking you watch, like one thousandth of a cent. So yeah, it's not, it's, gonna... it's not much. We have to have a lot of lots and lots of views. But I hope that answers your question. So, and the thumbs up. So someone, someone mentioned this earlier, a little bit about YouTube. They were like, hey, I've got the bell clicked and I'm getting notifications for all these other things, but I'm not getting notifications for your channel. Um, the, the computer side of YouTube is always watching what you're liking, what you're commenting on, um, and things, things that you save in your playlist. So if you're not saving the videos or commenting on them or thumbs Sharing upping them, them, you're not gonna see our videos. Even if you have that bell click, <coughs> you'll see like every fifth video or every fifth notification that we post instead of seeing all of them. So. so if you really love our videos and you want them to show up in your feed and get the notifications, the more you comment, the more you like, the more YouTube will make sure that you're seeing them and show them to other people that have similar interest as you and that helps us out a ton so we're happy for any comments any thumbs up thumbs down shares that it makes a huge difference for us and if you if you're just sitting there and the commercial's on and it's not bugging you and you want to just let it play the more you watch it it helps us with our like end revenue so we appreciate that christina bizzle asks how will you display this basket in your store so um, sometimes I, if they're smaller baskets, I hang them, but this basket will probably be displayed on a piece of furniture or I will actually, um, take this basket and hang it up on the wall vertically like this. I try to use all the wall space possible. And so sometimes I'll do like, or like over a door, you know, you put it over a door, but if I put floral in it at the shop, which I probably won't do because it would take a lot of floral to fill this up and I'd have to car charge a lot of money. If I did find some thrifting or whatever and put it in here, then I would just display it on a dresser or a sofa table or whatever I have in the store. Lori, Lori Jane said she loved our last video with the shutter selves. Well, oh, thank fun. you. We really enjoyed that. We're gonna do more chippy videos like that coming up. In fact, I wanna to talk to you guys if you've, if you've watched this far, um, comment below. We're thinking of doing, we're, we're building a farm table for our space down in Anthem to use as like a workbench so they Display can do table. tutorials and display and things like that. So I'm building a table for that. It's gonna be a really fun, really unique piece. My question is, do you guys wanna see one like quick cut video of that or do you wanna see more detailed videos like two or three videos and get more of kind of the behind the scenes like how everything goes together, the lathe and making the legs and things like that. So my thought was to do it in two videos. One would be a build video, which would show you like some basic building construction techniques on how to do it. And then this, the second video would be on the finish. And I'm planning on doing like a chippy finish on the bottom and a stained top. I feel like stained tops hold up better. And we'll show you how we finish that. And then 
Um, some of the other videos I've been thinking about doing, we show you how to do chippy milk paint, but there are some ways to get some layered chippy crackle using a putty knife with the DIY paint. It's just a different look. So we'll, we'll come up with some more videos on that to show you how to use it with different types of paint and things and techniques you can do to achieve like an aged look. Because really, I think we've done a lot of different types of videos, but my personal style is very much chippy farmhouse, and that's what I want to explore all different ways on how to incorporate that. Yeah, so we're going to be doing a really, really fun finish on this table too. Like it's not just going to be, we're building it for ourselves how we would want So we can do whatever we want. Yeah, so. <laughs> Um, there was one other one that I missed here. Oh, someone asked if we're going to have farm tables for sale in the shop. I can't find you on here. Oh, I'd Anthem? say your name in Anthem. We're not good. Like, we got to take them a long ways. We're 10 and a yeah. half hours drive away from Anthem. So we're not going to have farm tables. But, but if we may like yeah. sell that one and build another one. Yeah, we might do something like that. But while we're down there we're coming a week early so we can do a bunch of thrifting and find a bunch of furniture and we're going to paint as much as we can and we're probably going to do that a few times a year and stock that store up with painted items which is something our california shop space doesn't have in fallbrook we just have our paint display and paints there yeah so my nephew's store um it's plant bar az and so the concept of the store is you can come you can buy something found and then they'll help you plant inside of it. And then it has a huge patio outside. So he's a horticulturist, is that the word? And a landscaper. So he knows everything about plants. So I'm coming in and bringing kind of the paint aspect. And we're going to keep as much stuff there as possible. If you want the best selection, you're going to want to come to the grand opening. We're going to spend an entire solid week thrifting and painting in Arizona. Getting ready, um, doing a lot of displays and stuff. So I think it's going to be really fun. And then at the grand opening, we'll be there for four hours with my nephew and his wife who get to meet them. And I'm sure you all wind up painting something. <laughs> it always winds up that way. So it'll be fun. Um, someone else asked, and I missed it. Um, the uh, They asked if we sell the display stuff, like all of the little stuff, like the fake flowers and things in our shop. If it's in our shop, even the for sale. even the stool that we made so that you can reach the paint up high on the paint display is for sale. We priced it a little high because we don't want to be making new stools every day. But if you really love the finish on it, you could buy that stool. Yeah. Um, on the floral and stuff, a lot of it does come from Ikea. So I price it pretty much what I pay for it. And a lot of it is just things I'm rotating out of my house. So I'm not necessarily making a profit on the floral but I like to keep it in the shop, change it out seasonally, so that way everything else looks good. And if I ever find like lemons or apples or things like that thrifting, I will totally pick them up. And if you find like the, last week I had a cake dome with lemons in it and I got this text, hey, do the lemons come with a cake dome? Absolutely, like I paid $2 for the lemons and $2 for the cake dome and sold it for $16.95 and all I had to do was wash the dome, I feel like. That was a pretty good profit and the lady that bought it was way excited because it came with all those lemons that would cost her quite a bit of money if she purchased them at a store so everybody wins all right guys i think we are all done for tonight <coughs> we painted the things and showed you all of our stuff we appreciate all the love and support everybody's talking here about how they watch the ads and thumbs up and we love it we that's love awesome that. you guys we would have absolutely no business if it wasn't for you and i was talking to somebody this week and i'm like yeah we work a ton and we, we, you know, we have scheduled stuff we have to do, but we get to spend every day together and that is so fun. And we co-parent, meaning there's no like, this is my job, this is his job. It's whatever needs to be get done. We just divide it up and having five kids, it's great to have an, an extra set of hands. I remember what it was like when you were gone all the time and it's much better having you home. So. I'm loving the wonderful art of dentist visits and <laughs> scheduling doctor's appointments. I actually have to say, recently I've been handing over the reins of scheduling appointments and you've been doing a really good job. Odelia got glasses this week, if you guys saw in my Insta stories. She'll have them in, in a couple weeks, so we'll share a picture of her with glasses. That was fun. We've got a couple kids in braces, and so we're always at the dentist. Jack had a bunch of cavities, and he had those filled, but now he's all good, and he's been working really hard to brush his teeth, so he doesn't get any more. Stephanie Prairie, we start at 8.30 Mountain Time every Saturday. We've been really, really good about that. I don't think we've missed, except for when we were traveling in I Hawaii. Think, 
we we missed yeah we did a different time that Saturday yeah and then last summer we missed one Saturday because we were without good cell service and we were enjoying ourselves at the lake so pretty much every Saturday 8 30 Utah time and then again on Wednesdays we go live at 10 30 Utah time and if you're a channel member you're gonna get an extra live every month and we alternate between morning and evening lives on our channel members so that way it gives everybody an opportunity to catch us so this next month in March our live will be in the morning and then the next month it'll be in the evening we always announce it on community so everybody knows yep all right guys well thank you for watching we appreciate it and we Give will see you Monday or a thumbs down we can handle it love you guys <laughs> subscribe to